Oh, it's a long one. Oh, and that's to Mr. Waters, but I'll read it to you. And that's from Glenn Smith in St. Louis, Missouri. To Mr. Waters, what do you look for when you are trying to find the perfect group of children's chorus for the song Another Brick in the Wall? And for Mr. Mason, how do you compose the drum beats and rhythms for Pink Floyd albums, and which album is your personal favourite to work on? How I'm going to be able to concentrate on answering that question. Well, knowing that no, I'm going to you <laughs> tell us how you write the drum parts. But I will try. What we do is we have a rider that goes out to uh, the promoter and it says, bosh off into town and find a bunch of kids, not from some posh school, who might appreciate the opportunity to come and work with us for an afternoon. The process is wonderful because they're new every day and they come up on the stage and I always work with them with Kit Lennon and uh, John Joyce, two of the BVs and I routine them and work with them for about half an hour and then they go away and they come back at about ten past eight for the beginning of break two and it was fabulous. Do you want to say anything about the original version of Nick Griffiths? Yes, I did. We were in LA finishing the record off. We had the multi track at Brick 2 and uh, we sent it back to England. They said, Dear Nick, find some local kids and record them on this. And it was only a minute long, the whole thing. And he did. Absolutely on his own, with no help from any, any of us. And we stuck it on and looped it through the multi track, put all the pages up, pressed play. I went, wow, suddenly realising that it was a proper record because the, the kids in London were sounded fantastic. Then we had to make it a bit longer so it could be a single, which is why there's a guitar solo on the end. I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. very good, well done.